Hello lovely people of YouTube and welcome back to Mark on Life. This week I want to talk about something that has always annoyed me. Echo chambers. So let's get to it. First of all, as always, thanks very much to everybody who watched last week's vlog. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the description below so that you can go and watch it now. So, echo chambers. For those that don't really know about this concept, it's very simple. It's about philosophically putting yourself in um, a situation where you are in a bubble, where everybody around you thinks the same thing. And it's, in my opinion, a very, very dangerous way to live your life. And we're seeing it a lot at the moment. Now, last week was the inauguration of President Trump and that caused some of the most outrage I've ever seen but we've seen it a lot in fact last week I talked about false positivity and one of the things that I saw happen particularly on social media is I see people blocking each other you know you see things like um, I'm gonna remove all negative people from my space um, I don't want any sort of negative influences, only positive influences around me. And I totally understand why people do that. Of course, you know, positivity breeds positivity. What you see around you is what you are. There's a total logic to it. I'm not going to deny that at all. So I can see why people would want that to be their environment. And the same exact thing happens politically. So you know, in the last 12 months, lots has happened. We had Brexit and now we have um, President Trump. And each time those things happen, people retreat into their echo chambers. And it seems like it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger as time goes on. We have seemed to have lost the um, the ability to to debate and and accept ideas that sort of don't agree with ours. Jonathan Pye did a very good video about this. If you haven't seen it, go check him out. Um, I understand that people have very, very strong opinions and it's awesome to get your opinions out there and make yourself clear in how you feel. But I find it's a weakness in people that they can't see the other side as well. Even if you totally disagree from the depth of your soul with the other person's opinion, listen to them, talk to them. These days, it seems that the, the first thing is to attack them. If you think they're being sexist, misogynist, racist, whatever it is, it's just attack them, shut them down. That's it, because they're wrong. Well, you might absolutely think they're wrong, but the first thing to do is talk to them. Because if you shut them down, the first thing that's never going to happen is that they're going to change. Ever. You never, ever change anybody by attacking them and shutting them down. In fact, they retreat. They retreat somewhere else, hide, and then vote. So if you want your views to be actually changing anyone's mind, you have to talk to people. Because otherwise what happens is you spend your life just preaching to the choir. All these amazing things that you post on Facebook and these ideas and these positive things and these um, situations that you think you're discussing, you're actually not. You're just circulating them with people that already agree. And so the next time that you might think, you know, I'm going to block somebody that, that is a Trump fan or I'm going to block somebody that voted Brexit. Just think for a moment, why? Why do I so disagree with them that I can't have them around? It seems to me that the more you are the part of a, a group, the less empathy you have for those outside that group. And it's that that has caused the greatest atrocities in all of, his, of history. That's an extreme version of it, but that's what causes it. So things like war and terrorism and all that kind of stuff, the root cause of them is always because of that, an extreme version of people believing something so fervently, 
people being um, a member of a group so much that to do things, horrendous things to people outside that group is okay. It becomes okay. You can justify those things because you're so, so in agreement with the members of your group. You're so right. You're not just right, you're right. You're totally, totally right. And everybody else is so wrong that they they can't be talked to, they can't be debated, they can't be swayed, so they have to be destroyed. Destroyed. Because that's the only way. If you destroy them, then that opinion's not there anymore, right? It's gone. Which only leaves your opinion, which is the right one. Apparently. I've seen this happen again and again and again. And all I would say is, my opinion is just my opinion. Your opinion is just your opinion. But have people around you that think differently. I make sure that my social media, friends, every, you know, all situations, there are people that definitely disagree with me. Because that's the only way that you're going to be kept somewhere near the middle, which is where I think sanity is. You know what I mean? People say, oh, you're just sitting on the fence. Yes, absolutely. Of course I'm sitting on the fence. Because the fence, sometimes, is the only sane place to be. Because then you can see both sides. It's the only place that you can see both sides. And you might be saying, well, there's some situations where one side is absolutely right. And you may absolutely be correct on that. But even if you think you're absolutely right, still see the other side. Still talk to the other side. Because if you don't, you are in danger of being in your nice, tight, little fishbowl echo chamber. And nothing outside it will ever be right. And that's really dangerous. Do you see people around you blocking everybody that doesn't agree with them? Or is your group of friends and people on social media open to discussion? Let me know in the comments and um, hopefully we can discuss it. Anyway, speak to you soon.